Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have a real cool guest. I got to have a cigar with him about a month ago at the OSV Talks uh, that we were doing in, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Our guest is Jim Coleman. We'll introduce him more fully when you get back, but you know him well from all of his appearances in Hollywood. And we're going to be talking with him about this really cool role that he's playing now as Father Augustus Tolton uh uh, a man who was a slave and became a Catholic priest. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Most of you know about my website, deepadventure.com, and the, uh, the man cave and the school of manliness. The school of manliness is a place where you can uh, join with other men, and we go through a three-year curriculum uh, on, on manliness uh, with the other men through our man cave. And then plus we have... This cool uh, curriculum where we have TV, we have audio, we have written content, we have assessments that you can walk your way through along with us. We all go through the same lesson every month. So over a three-year cycle, we've gone through all of them, and then we, we do them again. But the real cool thing is that you can do these with your sons. If your son's 10 or 11 or 12 or that age, wouldn't it be cool to be able to say to them, hey, um, uh, when you normally they come home, hey, what did you do today? Oh, nothing. What did you learn? Oh, the same old thing. This is a way for you to have a real deeper dialogue with your son and lead him from being a boy into being a man. So as you journey with other men, you can also journey with your sons. They can have their own logins and go through Bear School of Manliness. What we're happy to be covering this month is the area of having a personal code, having a personal creed. You know, my, my, my personal creed is that the most radical quest you can ha have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Uh, my my boyhood hero, Duke Hanamoko, his uh, his creed was that um, his creed is my creed is aloha. That's what I believe, and that's what I extend to everyone is my greeting of aloha, which of course means love. So uh, each of us needs to kind of uh, go through a process of dialing down what you know. Even in a business, you have your mission statement. It might be one or two or three sentences, but figure out what you're all about. In our website, uh, Bear School of Manliness, it's all cowboy based kind of cool and uh, you know there's the cowboy code and if you've ever read my 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 uh, my who I love so much Louis L'Amour his books all of the men live by a code Louis L'Amour's the greatest western writer that ever lived and I'm so fortunate because his first his last editor was my first editor so uh, so th join us at deepadventure.com join the bear school of manliness and let's uh, work on on that code because you know when you adva ad abandon yourself to God's will you get to see God do stuff because you're right in the middle of what he's up to. So uh, think about going to Bear School of Manly and SteepAdventure.com and joining us. So we have with us today Jim Coleman, uh, one of the greatest golfers that ever lived, <laughs> uh, uh, according, according to him. And we don't lie. Uh, and we met each other at an OSV Talks in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So how's your golf game, Jim? It's, uh, it's good. I can't complain about it. I mean, uh, it could be better, but I like where it is. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you're as an actor, you've been in, I'm going to just kind of mention some of the things that you've been in. You were Roger Parker in Nickelodeon in the series My Brother and Me. Uh, you've been in The Ant-Man, The Quad, Law & Order. Uh, but this new episode, that this new uh, season in your life, you've been working, uh, playing the role as Father Augustus Tolton uh, in uh, – in uh, hit the story of his life, the man, the first black priest. Uh, and we're going to get into that. But first, I'm not going to let you dodge the bullet about your golf game. I know that you, everywhere you, 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 you generally play around a golf wherever you're working. Is that when you're doing these live yeah, productions, that's right? That's true. Uh, when I have a day off, I'm going to play golf. Uh, and, I, I get an Uber, I go find a golf course, I rent the clubs, I, and I play. I'm going to get me around in pretty much anywhere I go. What's the best? What's what's the best thing you the best thing you've done in the last few months in golf? What I mean, you 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 hold in from ninety yards or what? Um, chipped in from a bunker. 
chipped in from a bunker. Okay. That's pretty cool. Did you get any sand in your eyes when you did that? I got sand all over my face, but I didn't <laughs> notice it because I was watching the ball. You paid your dues. Okay, so now that we've heard his lie, now let's hear... <laughs> <laughs> let's hear the worst experience that you've ever had in a golf um three in the water off the tee <laughs> <laughs> it's like the other day i was out golfing and uh and this guy starts yelling at me like dude get off the women's tee and i, I just look at him i gotta shake it off you know i'm embarrassed i go to swing again dude you're on the women's tee. Get off the women's tee. And I just shake it off. I ignore him. I'm trying to concentrate. And then he says, dude, get off the women's tree. And I go, man, I'm trying to hit my third shot here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's happened to yeah. all of us. Well, we want to know a little bit about, about you first, Jim. So, uh, uh, well, first of all, we know a little bit about your um, – tell us about how you e evolved into th this – these becoming an actor how does that happen um totally by accident really i mean it's one of those things i did some acting in high school uh got out of school joined the military um and after the military i was working as a press operator and i uh would do local theater i do theater in the evening you know and someone suggested that i audition and um i started auditioning and one thing led to another. The next thing you know, I was starting a TV show and in movies. And uh, well, where, where were you? Where were you doing? Where did where did this happen? I, you... This all happened in Florida, Orlando, Florida, Orlando. I, I did some local theater in Pensacola, Florida, after I got out of the military. But uh, when Orlando started building all the uh, studios, Universal Studios, yeah. uh, the back lots, I moved here to Orlando and. Um, it was wonderful. I started working and there was so much work here in Florida that you couldn't help but kind of fall into it. And um, after that, I started commuting to New York. So I commuted from Orlando to New York for 15 years. So <laughs> a lot of the work happened in New York. So it so it just was the easiest thing in the world to get all these roles. In the way you make it sound, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what, is it, what is it you find that's so interesting about what what is your draw to 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 acting taking on taking on the persona of someone else and the, and they're they're you know how... i would have to say that it's it's like wearing a mask you become someone else you become something else you have on this mask that no one really knows who you are and you can pretend it's it's just like being a kid all the time it's playing make-believe like you like i'm from dallas born and raised in dallas texas so cowboys and indians was always the yeah day, me too dude I mean? of course so, every day uh, all day I, I'm a, yeah so you pretend it, you know and um being a full-time actor i get a chance to i had the opportunity for 30 years to pretend uh it wasn't until I started doing this one man show that I had to take off the mask and be real, you know, Interesting. Uh, because I was actually facing the audience and I was telling the story of an incredible, uh, incredible individual. You know, I've, I've got to play. I've got to have a few roles. You know, I was in Hawaii Five O and a few other things. And, and, and I, I, I don't act. All I can do is be myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, you know, if, if, if this works, then I can be that role. But I can't I, I don't know how you can do it. Are you are you good at crying on camera? Have you ever had to do that? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's a lot of times, you know, uh, you, if you are into the role, mm. the tears come naturally. It, it really comes naturally. But if it doesn't, they have uh, like a it's like. A vapor, a, a, a vapor, oh, like a, what do you call it? Pepper Vicks, spray? Like Vicks, is it pepper Vicks, spray right? like you get a grizzly with? <laughs> Pretty much. It's like Vicks. And they, they put the mist into your eye. And it oh, makes you now yeah. you've ruined it for me. <laughs> Take back all those Oscars, everybody. That was all, you know. Oh, that's so funny. But your your new mm -hmm. role, we're going to talk about it when you, when you when you come back. This is this incredible okay. uh, role as... Uh, Father Augustus, how did it come about that you uh, that you began that you became uh, got that role, began to do that role? 
it was not something that I had planned on because I, I liked doing television and film. Um, a friend of mine who was helping with some casting had heard about the role and she said, oh my gosh, Jim, I, I heard about this role. You're perfect for it. God laid it on my heart to talk to you about it and tell you uh, it's for Father Augustus Tolton, the first black priest in America. God said, this is your role. And I said, well, you need to go talk to him again because I'm not doing it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, mm. but because we had been friends for so long, I said, listen, I'm just going to audition for it and uh, get it out of the way. I auditioned and somebody else got the role. So uh, that was there it. you go. That's God's way. There's yeah. always the death. <laughs> there's always the death and resurrection. I mean, it's kind of God's way of, of uh, dying Absolutely. to it. And then like if he raises it up again, you know, it's his will. We're talking with Jim Coleman, uh, my friend that I met at OSV Talks uh, a month ago. And uh, and is uh, is the 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 actor in, and plays the role of uh, Saint Luke Productions on Father Tolton, and he does these live productions all over the country. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Buckaroo. What brand do folks put on you? No doubt, some good and some bad. Lots of terms for cowboys, cowhand, cowpoke, cowpuncher, ranch hand, herder, brush popper, never heard that one, did you, and buckaroo. Was a time in Arizona when cowpokes resisted being called cowboys due to the outlaw gang known as the cowboys who notoriously tussled with Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. From dime novels, the popularity of rodeos, and Hollywood producing Western movies, the term cowboy rose to the top and stuck. I do admit having a personal liking for buckaroo. It has a certain feel when you pronounce it, with a sort of wholesome tune when you get to the roo and buckaroo. Herders were multi-ethnic. Most trail drivers were veterans of the Civil War, Confederate, and Union, with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% being freed slaves. Others were European immigrants, Mexicans, and American Indians. Christianity is indeed multi-ethnic. Bible types called by a number of names, some good and some not so good. Essentially, Christian means little anointed ones or followers of Christ. We've been called hypocrites, fundies, Bible bashers, hateful, and so on. Sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Not to worry. The key is following and imitating Christ in word and deed. Jesus said we would be known by the fruit we bear. Hopefully our fruit looks wholesome to others because, well, it, it is wholesome. Keep in mind, though, our fruit will be ultimately judged by Christ alone, not others nor our culture. This is Dan Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's such a cool, amazing thing that I have a radio show. I remember when I was in college, I took a radio class, and they made you say all kinds of weird words and enunciations and things, and, and I just kind of walked away from radio, And then, but I always had a love for it. And you know what? You know why I love having my show is because I get to talk to the coolest people, and so that's why I get to have Jim Coleman, the actor Jim, Jim <laughs> Coleman, on our radio show today. He's a Hollywood actor, of course, but he's also playing the role of uh, Father Tolton, uh, the first uh, black priest who went from be being a slave to being a priest. But I got to ask you one more thing before we go into this. Now, now we're going to get okay. into the gritty of it is, how are those cigars that night in Fort Wayne, Indiana that we had? 
Oh man, they were excellent. They were excellent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I have to go back and say, I remember the first cigar I got from you was at the Napa Institute. Yeah. 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 And I remembered that. I, when I saw you, I was like, cigars, right? <laughs> <laughs> That was a few years ago. It's so interesting how I am that I, I, I will someone come up and say I've met you before, and they'll actually even people that I know <laughs> I should know well. It's almost like I'm face blind, but as I hear their voice and their mannerisms, that's how I clue in and I remember those moments. But we we were at OSV talks, and I want to ask you a question. For me, uh, you know, I speak all over TV, radio, and everything like that. But for me, when they when they told us, okay, here's where you're going to stand. You got exactly 15 minutes. We have over a million dollars worth of cameras here to to uh, to, re- to videotape you. We've got you know a crew of 20,000 people here, however many, they tons of people, and uh, and, uh, and 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 hit your lines and 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 then of course then they say this, but don't stress about it. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> You're going to be marvelous <laughs> after they totally. That's, that's one thing. It's like no, don't worry about it. that. Don't don't stress. It's like you're looking around going, oh my god, you so much, but. Uh, it was truly a uh, a wonderful experience. I really enjoyed that talk. Really well, you were awesome, it. Jim. You were awesome. I mean, I I started mine, and after the first sentence, it was like staring in the face of this surf spot called Jaws. Where one time I was surfing with my wife, and a big set comes, and uh, she says, "What do we do?" And I looked at the wave, and I knew our position, and I said, "Nothing." <laughs> You know, there's going to be a wipeout here, and I had a wipeout like that. I just, I just like here it comes, and there was nothing. My whole face went, my mind went blank, and I had to restart. And they said, and they, all, and they kept saying, whatever you do, if you if you have a problem, don't start over. But I said, I got to start just over. Keep going. Just but keep your, going. But your, just your, your, your performance though, your 15 minutes of OSV was riveting. In fact, it's really the only one I really got to listen to was yours, and it was just so powerful. So, Thank so I thought I got to get Jim on my show. And let, let's talk now about who the, uh, well, first of all, the name of the show is what? What is it actually called? I'm trying to see. Tolton what from Slave to Priest. Tolton from Slave to Priest. And people can invite you to come to their churches and their, their different uh, Oh, absolutely. Uh, and what not they just... can do is contact uh, St. Luke Productions, stlukeproductions.com, uh, and just request it. And usually what happens is we will do five to seven performances throughout that area. So we'll go within 50 to 75 mile radius and we would do shows at different theaters or parishes or schools. We do so many high schools. We do performances at Catholic high schools all the time, uh, at seminaries, at at parishes, wherever, you know, we're invited, we get there and we make sure to tell this story. And it's, it's, and it's such an amazing story. Is it a, it's a one man show? Yes, it is. And, and, and by the way, I know Jim, I've seen him in action and he can carry this, but, but do you have a lot of non-Catholics that come too? A lot of what? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We've done it at like, um, at theaters like downtown theaters uh in in a city they the show is at a theater and the community comes out so many people come out we were in um i think it was memphis tennessee at one of the larger theaters there uh it was i think it's a 2500 seat theater and uh the cannon center i think was the name of it and uh we had i mean people from all over uh tennessee coming to see the show but the great thing about that was they bust in 1,500 students to see the show. And were they African-American? Were they black students or all kinds of? All, all different races, white Catholic schools, uh, black Catholic schools. I mean, it was just, it is such, see, because the story, uh, from my perspective, is not a black or white story. It is a story of perseverance. It is a story of understanding your your calling and 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 following it having faith that god will bring you through no matter the 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 obstacles and to have a praying parent his mother was an amazing praying woman a woman that escaped slavery with three small children Mm. and uh it was a situation if you think about it here's a woman escaping slavery with three little children uh the 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 soldiers came came after them uh they were pushed out into the mississippi on a little dilapidated rowboat and they were being shot at 
And this woman crossed the Mississippi. She's never rode a boat before, but she got her children to safety, which lets you know that you will sacrifice everything for your children the love of your child, you will sacrifice everything. And she did, and uh, they made it across, they made it to freedom. But she was baptized in the Catholic faith by her slave owners. And she never gave up on the Catholic faith. That love of God, the love of Mary, the just that faith. It's, it's, it, see, that's one of the things that I feel that is so strongly about. Faith will carry you through, you have to have faith. You have to believe and to know that you have people praying for you. You have people praying for you at every moment, whether you know it or not, there are people praying for you. And they were praying for him. And he became the first black priest in America, even when no seminary in America would take him because he was black. Uh, but the story is a story of perseverance, a story of love, a story of sharing a story of believing that we are all one in Christ. You know, I, I saw old Billy Graham clip the other day, and uh, he's pre he's preaching, and suddenly he pauses and he said, "Now I want to speak to the black the black community out there. Jesus Christ died for you; His blood is red, just like yours. You know, all of us have the same color blood the, the blood that Jesus shed for us. And I think now during this 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 time, especially, we need to come together, but believers of of every denomination and and of every of every uh, race, you know the thing about Hawaii. Oh, I'm gonna, let me tell you, I think some of the be beautiful thing about Hawaii is that uh, someone was talking to me the other day. There's no there's no racism here. Now that isn't exactly true, but we are so uh, connected. At we're so intermarried <laughs> here, mm. you know, <laughs> that uh, that we're like like we're, we're like one family. You know, and and the ocean seems to be the great the great leveler. Uh, Jim, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh, do you would you be able to give us a minute or two uh, when, uh, of uh, of one of the oh, wow. of one of Father yeah. Tolton's lines if we take a break and we come back? Yes, I you, think I can. I know you can. I know you can. <laughs> okay, so I'm just giving you the heads up on that. But you were talking about faith. I know in your AS, uh, OSV talk you you were mentioned you talk that's what it was on was faith. Uh, what does your faith mean to you? Um. For me, my faith is, it's, it, it, to put it bluntly, I guess my faith is my survival. My faith keeps me going. My faith has rescued me. My faith has carried me. My faith is my survival. My faith is my everything. Um, uh, I understand my, I was, like you say, we, we all have mottos that we live by and it's do what you have to do now so you can do what you want to do later. You have to have faith. You have to believe that what you're doing right now will carry you to where you want to be. Wow, that's so true. So it's like, I know like when you're starting off on a new adventure, maybe it's just like I'm going to get in shape and you think, mm -hmm. well, you, that those first few days of, of, of training and eating better, you're like, is this really going to pay off? And so you don't have the motivation to do it. So that you're right. At the, it's, right. At, it's now when you need the faith. You can see where you're going. You can see that vision. And you just start the process. And you take one step at a time. When I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, one pedal stroke at a time. But the first day was the hardest. Hardest mountain yeah. climbs and everything. So that, that faith, is, I, I, I get that. That faith is, it, it, you're willing to pay the price now because you have the vision of where you, of where your journey is going. We're talking with Jim Coleman. He is the Hollywood actor who starred in so many, so many Hollywood uh, and television uh, Nickelodeon series. My brother and me. He's been in the Ant Man, the Quad, Law and Order. I mean, we were at when we were at OSV talks. Everybody just, you know, we're like, oh man, that's Jim Coleman over there. So, and we were just so happy that you were there. You know, sharing your 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 talks about faith. But where can people find out more about how they can bring? Uh, the Father Augustus Tolton story to their town. Absolutely. Where can they find, where can they reach you? Well, you can go to stlukeproductions.com or toltondrama.com. And um, there's a calendar. There's also, it's, it's a, it's a, you can check, say, bring the show to us. And you click on it and you will get all the information you need. Um, we'll have someone get in touch with you. Uh, right now, we are like on a small hiatus. The shows will start back up in September, but they're booking right now. So if you go to 
stlooproductions.com, toltondrama.com, and uh, we'll be able to bring the show to you. Yeah, so you, the shows are already scheduled, so you may, uh, you may be going to the show, or if not, bring the show to your community. We're talking with the actor Jim Coleman, who plays the role of Father Tolton in, uh, in the new uh, the live production by St. Luke Productions. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. Hey, you know what's really scary? Going to confession. Because you, know, you first went to the confession, at least I did when I was like, I don't know, seven years old. And I had to confess that I was playing underneath the pew when mass was going on and I was such a horrible person and I was scared. And I never go to confession without being scared, but kind of an adrenaline rush, right? I always say going to confession is kind of like jumping out of an airplane. You know, you, 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 you go, you pack your chute, you're thinking like examine of conscience, you're examining your chute. What can I say? What do I need to ask, seek forgiveness for? And then I gotta go talk to a priest in persona Christi and say, I did this and I resolved not to do it again. And you're nervous. And then you go in and the priest just usually makes it so wonderful. And uh, you take that jump out of the airplane. Now I've been in the airplanes where people are super scared and they don't wanna make that jump. Uh, but you know, they might have that look of great fear, but when you see them when they jump and you see the video of their jump, their, their faces just light up with a big smile. That's what it's like when you go to confession. All nervous, all scared, and you jump out, and then there's this great joy when the priest gives you absolution. Uh, it's almost like you feel after you've gone skydiving that you could conquer the world, that you can do anything. And to me, that's what it's like when I go to confession. You know, it's said that Pope St. John Paul II went to confession every day. Uh, so why aren't we going to confession at least once a month? Uh, and when you go to confession, I've talked to so many, especially men, who their return to the faith, their return to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ began when they went to confession. Eric Wardrum, the, the founder of the Catholic Motorcycle Ministry, has a powerful uh, testimony that when he went to confession, his whole life changed. Take advantage of the sacrament. This is Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you wanna find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We, hey, you guys, our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. You know, it's a motorcycle-based TV show. I'm just a surfer, I know, but I mean, I love my wife and I love riding <laughs> motorcycles, and we got to meet a lot of the, the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry, the Knights on Bikes, and the, and the Iron Deacons, and, and so many other really cool bikers out there where we were, we were filming. And it airs, I think it's every Tuesday night uh, on EWTN channel. But also, you can go to deepadventure.com and you can become a member of the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. And uh, you get uh, access to all of the seasons of Long Ride Home. Plus, you get, uh, you get to see the, uh, the episodes before we send them to EWTN for their final uh, little changes. So, so you get them right away. And it's a really cool evangelistic tool because you can share these. What they are is it's, it's, it's access to a, a private YouTube list. You can share them with your... Uh, your brother-in-law or that one person that you know you'd really like to share the gospel with but he needs to hear it 
from a gritty uh, sort of perspective. And that's what Long Ride Home is all about. So you don't, you don't have to wait for the next episode. You don't even have to wait for the next season. You can go to deepadventure.com, become a mama bear, become a member of the man cave, and you've got all of them right there. We're talking with our, my friend Jim Coleman, uh, who, is, uh, who is an actor. He's, um, he started in as uh, Roger Parker in My Brother and Me. Uh, he's, he's has films and he was a film in the Ant-Man quad and law and order. But one of the things that we really, why we have him here is because he plays the role of father Augustus Tolton in, uh, in a St. Luke production on his life. So Jim, when I saw your OSV talk, it was pretty, I don't even know how you can do that because it was such a, so personal and, uh, you took us on a real intensely personal journey with you. And it was it was riveting. I, I can imagine your performance in, in this is 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 just as riveting. Can you do a, a, a minute or two or a few minutes from the show itself, the live production, for us? Oh, uh, sure. Um, Set the stage for us. This is Father Tolton, um, basically talking to his parishioners, and he says. The first thing to understand, my brethren, is that there is only one race. That is a human race. God created us all in his image and likeness. God shows no partiality, and neither should we. God gave his only son to save not a few, but all. Jesus commands us to love one another just as he loves us. There is neither Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So powerful and so and so and and so needed right now. That exact statement that we're one in Christ. There's the there's the um, the struggle I think so many have. Well, I'm you know here in Hawaii. Okay, so on the mainland, it's like this, Jim. You you meet with other wa- surfers, and they'll say, "I'm a body surfer, I'm a boogie boarder, I'm a long boarder," or they'll say, "I'm a short boarder, or I'm a kite surfer, I'm a hydrophil." They're one of those things. In Hawaii, we don't think like that. In Hawaii, we say, "I'm a waterman." I. I longboard, I shortboard, I tandem surf, I boogie board, I spearfish, I outrig a canoe, I sail. And in this time, we as a peop- we as Christians, yes, there are denominational differences. And you can hold to what you believe, but still we have to find that common ground in Jesus Christ because we need to stand together now. T- Absolutely. The- Absolutely. I agree 100%. I mean, I I believe that you know, we all have to come together for the greater good. God loves us all. God wants us all to be saved. Like you said, like Father told us, said, not a few, but all. He didn't send his son to die for just a few, but for all, for everyone, every race, religion, every 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 nationality, for everyone to be saved. And what all we need to do is respond you know the reason why in some ways people can put god on a shelf and their faith isn't really faith it's just presumption is because when jesus the greatest you know what here here he is he's he's the god of the universe he created the universe he enters into his creation and, and 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 the father sent his son so even as jesus gave his life i think it's even harder honestly for a father to give his son and he, 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 he cost God everything in that sense. And because of that, it, it doesn't seem to cost us anything. You know, it just seems like it's just people think of it as cheap grace. Like I'll put God on the shelf till I really need him or I'll put him on the shelf until maybe later in life I'll get serious. And we, we tend to disregard God because salvation is a gift. But the gift has to be received. We have to look up to the Lord and say, Lord, uh, we, don't, we have to say these things. Jesus, you're my Savior. 
and you're my Lord. Those are two different things. I, I receive your gift of salvation, but now let me be your servant. And I, I also truly, I feel that it is, it, it's so important to me. Like when I, I talked about a praying mother, how God decided to have his son born of the Virgin Mary. And I, and I feel that it is so important for us to understand that I, God could have sent his son to earth, sent his son here as a grown man, but he wanted him to know the love of a mother. And it is so very important that we love that mother, that we love our mother, that we love all mothers, because God saw that it was important for his son to have the love of a mother. And I, I think we have to really see it to know that Jesus, the son of God, was held in the arms of Mary, that he, she held him and he felt that love. And that is a love that cannot be duplicated. Well, it can only be duplicated by God. And I think once we understand and that this love is so pure that we have to continue that love and share that love and we have to live in that love and 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 we find salvation in that love yeah the, the, it it's not a, a okay so salvation comes from god who is love i mean he's initiating our redemption and i love what you said about uh, mary you know i was with father um i was with with father uh calloway don calloway in israel and his mother was on the trip with him. And, you know, Father Don Calloway, he, he writes about uh, the rosary. He writes about St. Joseph, you know, the mother and the father, the earthly father of Jesus. And, uh, and But when his mother was with him, you know, she was always helping him, always one or two steps ahead of him. And he was <laughs> always so busy, um, not saying that God in heaven isn't too busy for us, but we would often go to her to ask, for something that we needed from Father Calloway. And so she kind of interceded for us too. And I'll tell you one thing, if we had ever treated her badly or ignored her or took her for granted, it wouldn't have made Father Calloway very happy. You know, we all found, <laughs> found her as precious and beautiful. And it's just so funny how people think, <coughs> excuse me, if we, if we express a fondness and a love for Mary, that somehow that's insulting to Jesus. You know, that, oh, nice. that's, that's lowering who Jesus is. But when people talk well of my own mom, it just makes me smile yeah yeah and you think about in heaven right now jesus is there with his heavenly father uh joseph and his mother mary and uh still has a profound love for her and just as she held him as an infant and suckled him you see i think it's called the piatra uh the statue when he died of her holding him cradling in her in her arms much like she did as a child and how we can say that when we ask Mary to pray for us we know she doesn't want that that sacrifice of her son to be wasted and that that grace will flow when we speak to her we're talking I, hey that's just you know it, it's like I'm just basking in the moment just just listening to those beautiful words we're talking with actor Jim Coleman he plays the role of father Augustus Tolton, what a cool name, in St. Luke's production, Tolton, from Slave to Priest. And he's touring the country again this fall, and you can bring him to your home. Where can they find your uh, work? Where do they how can they get tickets or know where the show is, is, is playing this year? Well, to find out if we're in your area, you go to toltondrama.com or stlukeproductions.com. Click on the calendar. It will tell you where we are, what time we're going to be there, how much. And this is one thing to also understand. A lot of times the tickets are free. It's a free will offering because we want to share the story of this soon to be saint. Praise so God. go to stlukeproductions.com yeah. or uh, toltondrama.com and, and, and we will come to see you. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. 
Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We just want to give a shout out to our mama bears out there. You know, I remember when we were talking about how do we describe the, these women that are so faithful to our ministry. And we said, we should call them the mama bears, because of course my name's Bear. And then the next day, this is a few years ago, my son walks in the door and dad, so he goes, hey dad, remember when we had our cabin up by Glacier Park in Montana? Do you remember how fierce the mama bears were? Like don't mess with their cubs when we would see them with their cubs? Uh, yeah, I do. And he was saying, you know, the mama bears, they are, they're not cuddly necessarily, uh, they watch out for their ohana. They watch out for their kids. I remember uh, seeing <laughs> seeing a beautiful, playful little cub uh, as we were driving the car along the road. With and, and grizzly and the grizzly mama bear was a little bit in front of him. And that little cuddly bear looked so nice, but when that mama bear looked back at us, it was like, whoa, <laughs> don't mess with her cub. And so we want to invite these mo- your, the mama bears to go to our site deepadventure.com and participate a little bit more in our ministry. We, uh, we, you can have access to uh, all of the Long Ride Home TV shows. And you can have access to all of our previous radio shows and our Catholic Catechism. And just for a little bit of limited time, when you become a member of the Mama Bears, we have this really cool Catholic biker teddy bear. <laughs> Someone gave, up, gave us a bunch <laughs> of them to, to, to give to you. So we love you, Mama Bears. Keep praying for us. We know that our ministry runs on your prayers, so we really respect and appreciate you so much. We're talking with a friend of mine, Jim Coleman. We shared a cigar at the Napa Institute. And we had one at the at the uh, when we were doing our OSV talks in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hey Jim, when we were at the Napa Institute, you know who sat next to me was Father Robert Spitzer, you know, former president of Gonzaga, and the author of a bunch of these books over here. And I got to have a, one of my, my one of my cigars with him. And I said I love your books, and I had read all of his books, and he. He started to quiz me like a pop quiz, like he had done when he was a professor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we should mention the, the the cigars we have are good, aren't they? And we have them at our website, Deep Adventure. The seven virtue, Excellent. the seven virtue cigars, and we have them at our website, deepadventure.com. So Jim Coleman, you know him as a Hollywood actor, even though most of his productions are in Florida, the, kind of like the new Hollywood in some respects. <laughs> uh, uh, he is he is Roger Parker in the Nickelodeon series, My Brother and Me. Uh, been in the films Ant Man, The Quad, and Law and Order, and other many other things, and now he's he's out uh, uh, performing all over the country. And you can invite him actually to come to your city too, as Father Tolton, the first uh, black priest. He went from slave to priest in St. Luke's production Tolton, from slave to priest. So, Jim, when you you know we we all did pretty good up there, you know, doing our our fifteen minute talks, but yours was like the room just kind of went silent when you, when you were giving yours. Uh, could you share with our, our audience something more from uh, your your performance as Father Tolton in the uh, live production? Yes. Could you share with us another segment? This, um, again, this is one of those um, moments when Father Tolton was, uh, he was addressing the, one of the first black Catholic Congress in America, he was he when he was introduced as the first black priest in America. Um, the Catholic Church deplores double slavery, that of the mind and, and that of the body, and endeavors to free us of both. I was a poor slave born, but the priest of the church did not disdain me. It was through the influence of one of them that I became what I am today. It was the priest of the church who taught me to pray and to forgive my persecutors. The church, which knows and makes no distinction in color and race, had called them all. When the church does this, is she not a true liberator of our race? She has colored saints, St. Augustine, St. Benedict the Moor, St. Monica. She is the church 
for our people. I never know about you because you have these long pregnant pauses when you when you <laughs> talk. I don't know if there's more to come. That's so beautiful. So beautiful. It's just a joy to see you, man. I really, really loved our time there at OSV Talks. So tell us more about what we can learn from, from Father Tolton, soon to be Saint Tolton. Soon to be Saint Augustus Tolton. Um, what we can learn from Father Tolton is that when it comes to your vocation, even though some people won't allow you to move forward, with God's grace, with faith, you can continue to move forward. I have performed at seminaries, and there were seminary students who saw the show who said they were this close to not finishing, that they were so close. It just, it was so difficult sometimes. And now there are some of those seminary students, I was in uh, California. One of the seminary students that was there in California, he now has a parish. He brought the show to his parish. And it was so amazing because he said, you, you remember when you were at the seminary? I was like, yeah, I remember. He says, wait. And he pulled out his phone. He showed me a picture of the two of us when he was a seminary student. And now he has a parish. And I was allowed, and he brought me in to perform there. So Father Tolton's story is, again, a story of perseverance, a story of, of, of being one. That is one true thing that I can say. He consistently says, understand that we are one in Christ. We are all God's children. And um, that's, that, that, that's, that's truly well, one of the lessons that he so teaches. So you have Jim. You have here as a young boy. He's escaping with his mother on the on a river on a raft, as they're being shot at. He's he's a young slave boy, and uh, and then what what is his story from there to to the moment of being ordained? Okay, what what happens then is he get to uh, they get to Illinois, and they 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 walk to Quincy, which is like 20 miles or however far. Was they get to Quincy, and his mother wants him to go to Catholic school. But the Catholic schools really don't take black student, black children. Uh, so he was working that, at a that's tobacco so factory. That's crazy. That that's our heritage. It's so crazy. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 the, in it, America the irony, there was no. But it, in, yeah. it was eighteen. It was the eighteen fifties. I'm when he. He was he was actually allowed to go to a white Catholic school. They accepted him as a kid, but it, he was bullied so much, and they 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 ran him out. The, the 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 parents didn't want him there, didn't want their children to associate with. And you think about it, he integrated schools way back then, and it was what a hundred years later in 1954, Brown versus Board of Education before we it, school school integration actually really happened. So a hundred years earlier, Father Tolton integrated Catholic schools. There was a white priest, an Irish priest rather, Father uh, Father McGear, who said there's something special about this student, and he's going to come here. And if you don't like it, you can leave. But this child will be educated here. Praise God. And uh, they sent out letters uh, there, but he could not get into a seminary. So Father McGear, the Irish priest, sent a letter to Rome and said, this is a brilliant student. And they accepted him in Rome. So he was there for six years, living in freedom for six years. And because he thought he was going to be a missionary and go to Africa. So that's what he studied, all kind of African languages. He was ready to go. And uh, a couple of days before the ordination, um, uh, 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 Cardinal Simeone, who was there, said to him, I have an idea. America, if they haven't seen a black priest, they're going to see one now. You're yes. going back to America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Holy Spirit so tapped, him back to tapped him on the shoulder and said, I got an idea. You know, be careful about that, you guys. When the Holy Spirit <laughs> does that little nudge, be careful. And so, and so how, what kind of resistance did he face or what did he overcome when he came back? 
Well, when he first got back, he was embraced. Everybody loved it because here it is. This 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 priest that studied in Rome. He's just he's uh, articulate. He has a beautiful voice. He's just everybody loved it. But what happened was that the white parishioners started going to St. Joseph's uh, uh, Black Catholic, where he was. So the white priest was like, hey, wait, wait, you can't do that. You can't have white parishioners there. You can't, you know, you can't do this. Uh, people from the Protestant churches and the Baptist churches, everybody wanted to come and hear his message. So everybody was upset. They said, you got to get out of here. You can't do this. He ended up having to leave and go to Chicago. They ran him out. Where was he? What town? He was in Quincy, Illinois. Quincy, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what the Holy Spirit does, right? The Holy Spirit shakes things up. It, it's amazing yeah. how much resistance there is to, to. Um, I, I hate to say it. It's not like it's a revolutionary thing. It's 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 the it's the basic fundamental teaching of Scripture, as you said at the beginning of our conversation. There's neither slave nor free, but the Holy Spirit will shake things up when people get stuck in a rut and they're not they're not uh, following the, the the path to freedom. There is a statement that says, uh, "Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free, and do not be entangled again." And the yoke of bondage, and we've learned can learn so much from from uh, from Augustus Tolton, soon to be Saint Augustus Absolutely. Tolton. Jim Coleman, we got to go. Where can they find more out about the show? Stlukeproductions.com or Father Tol uh, Tolton Drama.com. Tolton Drama.com. Saint Luke Productions. People can find out where where the production is showing. The the the, the Absolutely. Uh, Click on the calendar, and you'll find out where we're going to be. Uh, if you want us to be where you are, just contact St. Luke Productions and uh, we'll be in touch and make sure we get there. Well, there you know, Jim, it's to... not all that easy. If they want to come, if they want you to come, you they have to be sure they have a golf course within 25 miles. Is that <laughs> what rule is? We've been talking with Jim Coleman. Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, we say here in Hawaii, uh, aloha. And so uh, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the BearWoznikDeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our DeepAdventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.